We'll go ahead and get started. We'll call the meeting to order. This is our council committee meeting, May 17th, 2016. The first item on the agenda under public works uh, is uh, Mr. Cahill, Mr. Skidmore. Actually, this uh, committee was chaired by Mr. Meyer, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Um, the, we, we've, uh, the working group uh, met a few weeks back to work through um, the various, the five RFPs that were submitted for the facilities uh, condition assessment and the fire location study. And yeah. after reviewing those and uh, with the assistance of Mr. F uh, Fields, um, checking some references, um, you know, we, we had some great discussion around, around these pieces. And uh, a after all of the, the conversations and the research, it's gonna be the recommendation of the committee to go with Murphy Graves Trimble um, to complete the, the, um, the fire location study as well as the facilities assessment. One of the reasons that we, we thought it would, um, that we really leaned towards this way was the fact that uh, having a, the synergies that we thought would be there between um, doing both pieces together. Um, there were very few of the uh, RFPs that actually submitted for both portions of the study. Um, so really leading us to uh, that, that item. Um, so we'd like to uh, um, ask that a municipal order be, I think we're going to do it as a municipal order, um, directing the, uh, you'd execute the contract to uh, use uh, Murphy Graves Trimble. All right. Um, Mr. Fields, you, you had. If there are any questions, I would like to introduce Mr. Chuck Trimble from uh, M and G and T tonight. Um, if there's any questions, he would be more willing to answer those or if he wants to say anything. So. Thank you. <laughs> That's a great way to start. Um, anyway, thank you all for the opportunity uh, to work with you. We look forward to it. We've put together a team that's very strong in doing these assessments and also very strong in the locationing of the uh, fire station. We feel just excited and we're ready to, to start work immediately. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to address those. What's the time schedule? I mean, how long does this take? That's something I want to, at the first meeting, start looking at. Uh, but uh, we're ready to start with that first meeting immediately. So we can do that, and then I can report back a very detailed schedule on each of the facilities and when a draft and a final version will come to you. <coughs> Thank you. Any other questions? No, I, I, just around the time schedule, I know that we were originally anticipating having this completed this fiscal year. Uh, we had monies budgeted for that, however, and in all reality, we're going to roll into the next fiscal year. So, um, depending on how the budget shapes up, we may be looking at a, an adjustment to, uh, for those funds next year. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trim Trimble. <clears throat> and just so I know, I think all of those things, when we, end up, when we enter into the agreement, we'll have all those time frames and things once we work it out with the company <clears throat> and get those done. Sure. Great. Thank you. All right. The next item on the agenda under codes, building, and zoning is our building and zoning permit fees. Mr. Uh, Dunhoff, Mr. Burke. Uh, Mr. Hondo. Mr. Hahn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, the first one there on the list is the, the uh, amendment uh, Turkey Foot and uh, Stevenson Road. Uh, I sent out a an email that had uh, some attachments to it, and, and that was one of them. Uh, just to, as a to refresh everyone's memory, if, if, and some of you may not remember, but many, many moons ago, we, when they redid Turkey Foot Road, it was determined that, that the complexion of that area has kind of changed. The owners of the property at that time suggested that maybe we, we look at making that uh, at that intersection there and maybe even down turkey foot some that would allow some type of commercial uses and at the time as many years ago council uh, agreed with that 
So recently, just about six, eight months ago, if, if you remember, I came to you all and, and, and they were in attendance and, and suggested that, that we go ahead at, at, at a committee meeting and prepare some text that you all thought that it, you might entertain that, that showed like a, something similar we did years ago on Erlanger Road in the first block of Erlanger Road from Dixie Highway that kind of incorporated some kind of commercial uses with residential. So that, that text that I, that I sent to you all shows that. I don't know if you all made copies of that and brought them with you. I got a few extra copies if, if you didn't. Uh, and I just wanted to see if you had any questions, comments, still in favor of doing anything like this or not. I think we need to at least give an opportunity. Uh, we did promise them if they let us go through with that project and we let them eventually look into that. So I don't think we ought to just stop it now. I think since we promised them we'd do that, we need to okay. take a look at it. Does at least take a look at what we, the opportunities and what can go in there. Well, if, what I've emailed out, if you look there, there there's, was three additional uses that were commercial uses that were added as conditional uses in that zone. And they were things that we had talked about, professional office kinds of things, uh, banks were talked about, uh, and then like a medical office, a dental uh, doctor's office and those sorts of things. Something that is pretty much, you know, isn't a 24-hour a, a day operation. Uh, and so those are the, the things that we put in there. Um, and I just wanted to get your feeling if you all were okay with those or wanted more or less or what? Uh, is that for both corners on Turkey Foot or are we just talking about the one where the daycare is? What we would be doing only would be adopting the text. Oh, okay. So that would then open the door for the, for the a p potential developer to come in and apply for then the, the zone change to select this text to put on that property. Okay, I got but don't we own the one corner? I don't believe so. Okay. No. No, we don't. Yes, ma'am. David, how big of a parcel is that? What they have there now. They don't buy more properties. Right now, the, 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 what they own is they have, it's like one acre out front. Okay. Then what the daycare is sitting on is like two acres. I think they have a total of three acres or three point something acres. Okay. So they would either have to acquire more property to, because you have to, to have a standalone zone, you have to have a minimum of five acres. Okay. So they would, so they would either have to get more property. However, they, it can incorporate the right of ways in that area as, as part of the zone. So, uh, if they include all the right of ways of Turkey Foot Road and Stevenson Road that they abut, they could probably make that. Okay. But that's up to them. I mean, they, they, right, right. the onus is on them to, to, to come up with that, to comply with the other regulations of the zoning ordinance. Okay. My question is, is that the look or is that what we're really wanting on along Turkey Foot Road? Because we're not talking about just a single parcel. We're that's correct. We're talking about from Misty Creek through Haywood, Brightleaf to Bottomwood, and then on, Dixie High, on, on Commonwealth from basically CVS up through Baker is R1F as well. So we're permitting, well, I, I, I agree it's conditional use, but. No, no, but, 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 but what, what, I'm, what this is, and I just have R1F because that's, that was the underlying zone there. We're not changing that zone to, to include this. Uh, they would be, a developer would have to come in and make that application for a zone change and come back to you all again for approval or disapproval. Does this create an entirely new zone? This is a cre creating an entirely new zone in our text that isn't anywhere in the city at this point. But, but a developer could come in and elect it on, this piece of pro on a piece of property to say we want to put it there. So if we're creating a new zone, does, does that not require a map amendment? No, that's just a text amendment because you're adding text to the, to the zoning ordinance. You're not changing the zone of any of the property. But a developer, the city would, is not. A developer would have to do it. Map the developer later. or the owner of the property would have to do that. We're just putting this to give them the the avenue to to select that to do that. Okay. 
and all it does is add these three uses. We don't have to call it the R1F hybrid. That's just what I put in there just for writing this. You know, we can call it whatever you want. Uh, you know, but no, it's, it's not just for that piece of property. Someone could elect to come to you anywhere and elect to change it to this and then select any of these uses provided that and then those uses would have to be adjacent to an arterial street, which is Turkey Foot Road, uh, Stevenson, Dixie Highway. So this is just putting the, the, the text in place for someone to choose this. Now, before we do this, should we inform the neighbors that we're doing this? Well, that, that, will, that will happen because of the it it because it would be an application with the planning commission so. and they would and there's a public hearing held okay yeah so that's required anyway right I that's uh is a text are text amendments are they required to notify no. on text they're not no. so the answer to your question we could do that well, I, we, definitely we could make sure that we do that, that. Yeah. without a doubt i mean linda brock's house is right there yeah and uh, yes, right. that's right. And she, she's, I know, interested in this as well. Cause I, but, but yes, you're right. Yeah. And we could, we could certainly notify the adjoining when, well, I take that back. They wouldn't know about the, let me start again. The text, again, is not just for that property. When they apply, they would have to apply for the zone change to change it, and at that point, everybody's notified. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, the, have to be bigger the than property five is, acres. The property is uh, posted that there's a zone change so, on whatever property it is. So it is the creation of a new zone, but we're not necessarily applying that zone to any anywhere. We, any the map. city is not. Okay. Yes. Yes. That, that, that I know it's sense. confusing. I, I, uh, I've got it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this would just be, whatever we decide to call this, would just be another section in our zoning ordinance, as this being a zone, zoning text, but it's not anywhere on our map at this point yet. Okay. okay. Any I'm, other I'm questions? I'd like the three yeah. things. That's mm -hmm. all I can go there. I if you... It, yeah. it, you know, if you if you if you think there needs to be more well, or yeah, don't like them, things, it's now 16 different conditional uses. So there was already 13 that were already there. That's correct. There's three additional. Yes. And there are more commercial in nature, and then they have the thing that the, about the uh, arterial street. I just don't want to see something like another gas station or. And I mean, I really do not store. want to see that there. Another dollar store. Oh, another dollar store. But <laughs> another dollar store. That's what we need. Is but is Stevenson a Stevenson is an I believe arterial? Stevenson is, no. is I, I looked at the comprehensive it's plan not, today and Stevenson is not an arterial. Steven is not an arterial? Okay. No. So it, just turkey foot. foot. It used to be years ago. I think they, yeah. Yeah, it should be. You're right. Yeah. It so it's a feeder? Or so it's a collector? Or a, collector. Yeah. Okay. Okay, if there's no other discussion or questions, we'll move on to the next item. Should we, uh, so, okay. The other thing is, uh, along the same uh, vein, uh, we had a request, uh, a realtor called and, and wanted to us to look at adding funeral homes as a conditional use in residential zones. He was saying, and, and I checked and verified that in Kenton County, there's however many there are, most of the zoning ordinances allow funeral homes in residential zones, again, provided they're adjacent to an arterial street. Us and, and four or five other cities do not. <coughs> uh, the request that came, if, if the city would entertain adding that, of funeral homes as a conditional use in the R1C zone or any of the residential zones, provided it's adjacent to a collector street. 
the piece of property that the guy that the uh, gentleman was uh, uh, talking about was the the church building that is at the corner at the on uh, Narrows at Brightleaf. That church that was there. Oh. They were just asking if the city had any wanted to look at it any further or not. If if they did, then at that point they realize they'd have to come forward and talk to you all and just show you exactly what they're planning on doing. But at this particular point, they're just, before they go through that exercise, they just want to see if the council has any interest at all at looking at doing something like that. So I'm just looking for some kind of, uh, so I can report back to them. How long has that been on the market now? Because that's been on for a while. It's been quite a while. I don't know the exact amount of time I could find that out but I but it it's been a while over a year oh yeah oh yeah a couple of, yeah it's going on a couple of years I think they even lowered the price yeah I mean one of my first impressions is that I'd rather see something there than it be vacant absolutely I don't but, think that's, that's out there enough that we're that'd be a good use for it I mean you know there wouldn't be a lot of noise right <laughs> <laughs> Most of our funeral homes are in residential areas anyway. <laughs> so, can we just set that up? Yeah, Commonwealth is a yeah. arterial or a collector. Commonwealth is an is an arterial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What other funeral homes do we have? Yeah. Oh yeah. Right, right. Of course. Yeah. So they were all at one time. They were all residential homes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. So now this one would be, since, because Bright, like as Mr. Meyer mentioned, uh, they're collector streets, so it's not an arterial, so it would have to be amended for that it's adjacent to a, a collector instead of the arterial like it is in most. So just wanted to get, just get your all's feelings so I can re report back to them to see if, if you all have any interest at all. And if you do, then... They, they'll go to the next step and have, have to come before you all and make a presentation and so on of just exactly what they want to do. It doesn't hurt to have them come. No, I have no problem. My opinion. It doesn't sound like anybody really has strong feelings either way. Well, they'd be your neighbors. How do you feel? <laughs> I, I, like I said, I mean, I'd, whether it's a church or a funeral home, it doesn't, exactly I right. mean, it doesn't matter as much to me. Um, I'd rather it be something than it be empty. How much property is that? There's a, what? It's a lot. It's, it's six good. acres. It's six, six, it's six to eight acres, I think, in total. That's pretty good. You know, yeah. They don't want to turn it into a cemetery. I have no issue, but you know. It doesn't back up. It does up have a nice big open lot does there. Does yeah. Property yeah. doesn't doesn't abut Turkey Foot. I, don't I don't, that far didn't think of that. No, that's a good point. Well, it, did you hear what JD said? As long as they don't want to make a cemetery there. <sighs> <laughs> still be quiet. Yeah, still going to be no noise. Yeah, still. Will it have a cream? Would they have a crematory with it? Uh, that would be, have to be something that we would have. That Different. When they come here, they'd have to explain to you just exactly what they're going to be doing. I don't mind hearing. As I don't know at this point. I'd say we proceed. Well, I'll tell them that they could go ahead and proceed and yeah and. Okay, and take it to the next step, and when they're ready, then I'll schedule another, through the committee, another uh, committee meeting for them to come in and, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Whipping right on through these. <laughs> All right, the last one I have is, uh, if you remember, we talked about the building permit fees, and I was looking at how, how I could show these to you instead of just telling you you know how we charge you know ten dollars for the first thousand three for these people this other jurisdiction charges 21 cents a square foot so the way I decided to set this up if, if you've, you've got this and I got some extra copies of that too if you all don't have any and would like to have one I used actual buildings that the city of Erlanger has had built or going to have built in the city and applied that to all the other jurisdictions what their fees actually are and and how we compare and if you look at these we're we're, we're pretty good uh, 
with, with most of the organizations. Uh, there's a couple that, that I did want to talk to you about uh, that, that, were, that you may want to consider. And that the first one would be if you look at the one that's marked as the hospital, the new hospital that's, that we've got coming. Uh, and they're going to be applying for the permit, the building permit this week, by the way. So, wow. so they're moving forward. They're hoping to have the footers in starting in June. So they're, they're moving along. So there's one in here, if I can find it, marked hospital. And if you can see, that is a large project. Page I seven. Find it. Page seven. There it is. Okay. And if you can see, it's a it's a what they were originally proposing. We haven't gotten the plans yet, but just from early conversations with them, they're proposing the the 140,000 square foot building and about a 44 million dollar investment and, and building. Wow. So if you look at there, the and that and since that is a hospital, that that has to be a state inspected project. We do not do the inspection. We do the concrete. We'll inspect the footers and foundation. Right. Uh, the fire department will go out and they'll do like when, when the time comes to inspect the sprinkler systems and test the fire alarms and the and in that one they'll have a hood system because they'll have a, a cooking facility. So they'll inspect and, and do those when, when that time comes. So there are some things the city does. However, if you look, our permit for that, the way our fee structure is set up, would be $46,000 uh, permit is what the permit cost would cost to them just for the city. And the city doesn't uh, do $46,000 worth of uh, work on that particular building. And if you go across, the state fee is $27,000. What a lot of cities do when the, when the state is doing the inspections is they decrease the, uh, uh, the amount of, uh, just for, for state projects only where the state does the inspections, they reduce the fees to the cities since we're not doing the work on them. <coughs> so after talking to uh, uh, Mark, uh, Mr. Fields, we thought that it'd be good if we, if we would say that we would drop this to a third of our fee, uh, which I didn't do the math, but a third of forty-six thousand dollars for you math folks. There you are. That's what. That's the. That would be the permit that we would get for that particular project, and I think that that's something that we should do uh, for this. So would we? Would we be amending our fee structure? Yeah, there would have to be an ordinance. It would be have to be an ordinance amended uh, to that has all the building permit fees. I think that's in one ordinance, I believe, yeah. the building and zoning permit fees. So that would have to be amended. And and we would basically just say refer to anything that's under that's state, state jurisdiction. That's okay. uh, that it's under state jurisdiction. The city charges a third of the of their normal permit fee. What a lot of the cities do. Some do half. Some don't do any. Uh, but we just felt that getting that much money from them for that kind of facility is a little over the top. Yeah. yeah. And they have asked when they called, because they're the ones who brought that up originally to me a month ago, that they knew that what our fee structure was, that, that holy smokes, and I told him, I said, I'll bring it up and we'll talk about it. So that's what, why I'm, we're here tonight. Um, they will probably, we will probably be getting a letter from them requesting that, that since they've got to apply, they're going to be applying, going to pay the fee. I told them they're going to have to pay the fee because that's the way the ordinance reads now. But I said, write a letter and maybe if, if it's the city, is, if it's legal to do that, when the ordinance passes, they're going to request that the city refund them back the other amount of money. The difference between what the new permit structure is and what... Can you see this adversing the city in any way with any future building? Well, the, the state inspects, is required to inspect a building that's high hazard occupancy. If somebody's making a 
fireworks, then they have to inspect that building. Hospitals, nursery schools, built, have, they have to inspect. There isn't many that's built. Jails, they have to inspect. This building, they inspect it. They have to inspect any governmental facility. You know, the, High this schools, is the, I believe, schools. I don't think we've issued a permit. I'm sorry. I, I was just saying, I was just adding to that. Oh. High schools, elementary schools, right. things like that, oh, okay. yeah. Okay, I didn't hear what you sorry. said. Sorry. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, if churches, if the occupancy is over, if like the occupancy is, is, is very lar real large, yeah. yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't see that that could hurt us in any way. No, I don't think it would. When, when we looked at this and why David and I decided to suggest a third was because, you know, we know that what the fire department has to do. They're still going to have some responsibility to do this. Um, Dave's staff will go with the state inspectors on some, on, on, on some of these inspections. They come here. So if they're doing that, Mark will go along with them. Um, and some of them, like David said, we'll do ourselves, like the concrete and those kind of things. Right. Um, and I believe somewhere in statute, you know, we, we need to be able to cover our cost and what that was. Absolutely. <clears throat> and we thought a third would, would do that. Okay. Um, a half we thought was a little too much. Some cities do it a half, or, and some, I think it was counties even were doing a half. Uh, we thought that was a little too much. So that's why we went with the third. So as far as adversely affecting us, there's not yeah. very many of those here, uh, but they shouldn't because we think that third should, according to the size of the project, cover our cost. Yeah. I have no problem. So, with it. Ethically, it's the right thing to do. Well, that, right. and, and you know, it doesn't look bad on our behalf. Yeah. Makes us look good. Yeah. With the yeah. hospital. I think so. For the state. Just make sure they know. Although they'll, they'll know. <laughs> <laughs> they'll know. And we don't do this for just everybody. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and you look at the breakdown that you have here. It's. It makes it apparent why there's not a whole lot of hospitals in Newport. <laughs> <laughs> now that 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 one, it, it, I'll have to give them a little break there because I got all these fees off from online, and and when something looked out of line, I called the jurisdiction. And I called Newport. I never did talk to the the chief building official there. I got the and and they just kept saying we do inspect we do all the inspections. State doesn't do any. And I said, well, ma'am, ma that doesn't work that way. And she says, nope, we do them all. So I, I just said, okay. Okay, fine. And, and just, but I applied the rate to it. So that's the kind of fee it is. So. All right. Yes, ma'am. I, I was looking at some of the figures here. I'm assuming, and I know what assume does, but you have... On planning and development services, Covington, Ellesmere, and Independence, they were almost a third of what the state charged. Is that how you came up with? Well, the th that the reason they're all the same <coughs> is the planning and development services does all the inspections for those cities. Boy, it's all the same. Actually, they do a half. So their their normal permit fee for a structure like this, if it would, if the state was not involved, would be about eighteen thousand dollars. Okay, but on the on the state fee on this on this whole sheet, you've got twenty seven three fifteen on. Yes. Okay. Because it would be both. They the the PDS charges nine thousand three hundred fifty five dollars. And the state charges twenty seven thousand three fifteen. Okay, which the nine three fifty five is about a third. Yes. Okay. But any right. more other questions on that? The only other one I have is the the board of adjustment fees. It's on the last page. If you can see, we're, we're certainly not the lowest, but I did a, a, a little calculation on, on that, so I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Uh, with, with, with a board of adjustment fee with our 
what we have to do, the time we, we put into it and, and, and so on, preparing for it, being at the meeting, doing the minutes for the meeting and advertising and sending out. Sometimes they have to go out certified. Sometimes they just go out regular mail. We have our variants, which we do the most of, is, is what mostly happens at the Board of Adjustments is variances, cost us $336 to do. We're charging $225. Uh, so uh, I'm not saying to, to raise it, but I'm just letting you know that, that it's costing us more than what we're taking in, paying the board, because the board members get paid $25 a meeting. So it, it's, it's something for you all to consider if you feel like you need to raise the fees to the Board of Adjustments. Absolutely. At least to break even. Now on the other ones, like on the, the uh, if you have to do the conditional use permits and uh, other things, you have to do a legal ad for some of those as required. And those cost us $527.50. Wow. For a legal ad, the legal you have to run the ad in the in the paper and Sherry's. I just use an average of about one hundred and fifty dollars uh, for a legal ad. So we need to revisit that. Yeah. I don't think we should be losing any money on that. Well, that, that, and that those are the two items that I saw that were really out of whack. I thought that that we should consider looking at moving the, the fee. And while we're doing the ordinance, I believe the Board of Adjustments fees are in that ordinance with the building and zoning permit fees. It could be one ordinance to reflect. Well, yeah, let's figure out what our, what our now, cost is. And yeah. That's what I would right. figure out what our cost is, and you might want to add 10% on that just to make sure. Handling fees. The handling fees. What if something comes up that they raise? That what's that? I'm sorry. Can you put a surcharge on there if it goes up? If, uh, no. Thank you. See how you are, Frank. So, but but as far as the, you have two other items on here, the appeals and the non-conforming use the change. The appeals and the non-conforming. The 250 is, is, that covers those costs? No, the variances and change from one non-conforming use to another costs us $336. Okay. The conditional use and an appeal of the zoning administrator's decision cost us $527.50. That's using, you know, doing Mark's time and, and uh, Jan's time because uh, she does the minutes and sends out all the notices. Right. There has to be a legal ad for, for those. Uh, some letters have to go out certified. So that's. I'd figure out what it's going to cost each of them. Let's get some the numbers together and let us and change it. Mm -hmm. Well, he's he's them. telling us what the cost yeah. is. Yeah. And then we need to change it. Yeah. I don't think we should be losing money on. No. So no. getting the variance. Just to be clear, I, I'm not sure if I caught that completely. The appeal also costs us the, five hundred. The appeal. The appeal of the zoning administrator's interpretation. Yeah. Five hundred. Because that has to be a legal ad. And, uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what I would propose that we. We say 550 on the appeal and the conditional use, and the non-conforming use change in the variance say like 350. Yeah, gives us a little bit of breathing room, but I mean 12 what 14 dollars. You, you can look at what other most cities have done uh, with them if you have that in front of you. You know, uh, some charge as high as for conditional uses, almost 1300 dollars. So let's, let's work on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd definitely get that into where we're not losing any money. Yeah. But those were the two things that I saw that looked out of line that, that we may want to. Well, that definitely, I mean, we cannot lose money. Yeah, it's ridiculous. That's funny right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we're performing a service for these people, so we, sh we shouldn't be helping them no. well, we, we don't mind helping at a them, loss. They're the ones getting the use out of it. They would probably argue that they shouldn't have to appeal it. <laughs> you know, uh, they, 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 that they should be allowed to do what they want to do. And, yeah, and, and exactly. you're right, Mayor. They, you, you hear that. <coughs> yeah. That's a different one. Go on, raise it. 
Yes. I have a question. So, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. On, on this Board of Adjustments, how many people who actually come to the Board of Adjustments get refu <coughs> refused? How many of them actually get denied? What percent? I've I've never, I have never no that. idea what the percentage is, but I, all I can tell you is the majority of them get approved. approved. Yeah. So basically, we're increasing the fee to make them buy what they want. No, we're increasing it to pay our, well, costs. To pay our costs. To pay what they but you're also making it. I mean, I agree with the increase. So I agree you, with that. Are you saying that. we should get rid of the conditional uses and make them all? No, I mean, it's like... It's, I mean, most of the people that come to the board, that's why I asked the question. The Board of Adjustments, most of the people I know that come in here and ask for a variance or they ask to do something that, they should, that they're not allowed to do according to the way the rules are written, they get what they want. They pay their fee, the gavel gets banked, and they get what they want. So we weren't aware, we weren't aware, aware of the council. We weren't aware that we were losing money doing it. What we're doing is trying to stop losing any money and paying for something and let them have to pay that's for it. That's taxpayers' money. Yeah. That's not what she's saying. That's not what, they, that's not what she's saying. That, that must have got changed when it got to the other side of the room, because that's not what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> she's saying but that. But we're getting old over here. We can't hear. Break, not break the law, but go beyond what we've got written in our ordinances to get a variance because they're paying money. She, it has nothing to do with us getting our money back. She's just saying that right. it looks like we're letting people buy permission oh, to I do something. Got you. I see. I got That's what you're saying, saying now. Okay. Right. Yes. Thank you, Vicki. <laughs> oh, God. We got two of them thinking alike now. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm used to hearing kids explain things, and I'm like, you know, teenagers explain things. I'm trying to think, is there any other way we could cut costs? I mean, you're, you're, paying, you're paying the the board, you're paying. You know, we're paying our, the legal our, our fees. people the salary, and we're paying the the board members. We're paying the. We well, have to do a legal ad. You got to pay that. Yeah, we can we can argue with the legislature to do away with the city notices and newspapers, right? But, but we could do that. <laughs> yeah. Do that. Again. I mean, call Adam right away. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he won, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he did. <laughs> so, but those were the two that I saw that that. We're out of line, and I wanted to bring those to your all's attention, unless you all see others in there that you feel need to be adjusted. So just out of curiosity, what would it take to change those rates? Is that a, is that a municipal order? Ordinance. ordinance. It's, it's an ordinance form now. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's an ordinance. Okay. I, I would think we proceed with at least, at least covering our costs. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Seems like I see a lot of head. Heads nodding. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, David. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. Thank you, babe. All right. Um, is he saving pennies? Oh. Next item on the agenda is under progress and revitalization. Um, <laughs> Mr. Cahill. <laughs> Turn it over to Mark. Just to follow up a little bit on what was just talked about, the fees. <clears throat> Mr. Gatlin, Mr. Wickman, and myself are going to meet Thursday morning to talk about the codification. If you look at the codification, our fees are all over in several different places. Um, what we're going to try to talk about is, is, is maybe centralizing them in, into one place. Um, and, it, and it's just over years, they've just gotten placed in different spots. So that's probably going to be something that if we do in an ordinance form, increasing those, it, it may be something we do all the time. Um, Mr. Wickman may want to address this a little bit. Uh, after our last committee meeting, we talked about some changes to our rental permit ordinance. Um, decided upon some to look at some, and then lo and behold, there's been a uh, court ruling come out, referenced some of the uh, points inside our, our ordinance that uh, we believe maybe would be in conflict with that court ruling, and we're looking to probably change it some more. So I don't know if Mr. Wickman wants to talk about it a little bit or... Yeah, again. if you want me to, I will. Okay. Uh, it's not that <clears throat> big of a problem, I don't think, but we have a provision in that ordinance that um, um, makes it a violation if there are continuing multiple criminal offenses on the property. 
and what what has happened is that uh, and, and those ordinances are common there's many cities that have them and you go on get on the websites and you can spend all night reading various different ordinances of, the city, of various cities but what has developed is that part of those uh, criminal offenses involve domestic violence and and uh, what happens is uh, the victim calls the police department, the policeman goes over there, and they, um, it, it's just a domestic situation. And sometimes by the time the police department get there, they're all lovey-dovey again, sometimes they're not. Uh, but in any event, the point is, is that you have a victim calling the police department, that triggers that provision of the landlord uh, ordinance that says, you have any more than a certain number, and they range from three to five to six or whatever, uh, your occupational license is subject to being revoked because of that criminal activity. So you have a victim that is now the victim of that ordinance because of some, in some circumstances, and in particular the one that, that Mark is talking about that I've identified is that the police department goes there and they said they tell the victim, you call us again and you're going to get evicted. Oh my! That brings into some into the picture some constitutional questions uh, that have been identified. Uh, the bottom line is there was I think it was in Philadelphia. I'm not real what? sure, but I think it was in Philadelphia. Uh, that happened. The, the um, public, not the public defenders, the legal aid attorneys up there, I think it was the legal aid attorneys, filed a, good, a good suit against the city of Philadelphia for the violation of the victim's rights to have the ability to call the police department and, and get some remedy for her problem. Resulted in a six-figure judgment against the city and triggered, more importantly than that, a review of that situation by the Housing and Urban Development Department of, this, of the federal government, which funds a lot of activities in large cities. And they ended up with a policy that if you've got this kind of provision in your ordinances, that disqualifies you for that type of assistance from the federal government. So I pointed that out to Mark uh, and Jack and suggest that we take that one provision out of our, res our, our landlord ordinance. So that, that's where we are. So along with that, uh, we've been bantering back and forth with this rental ordinance for a while now. And, you know, so I got back with staff and what are we trying to accomplish with this ordinance? What we're trying to accomplish is us having contact information for the land owner, the property owner. Um, that's where we were issuing, you know, all of those, the, that's where we were encountering problems when in fact we had a nuisance violation at that location. <clears throat> so talking to the codes enforcement officers, talking with Dave and, 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 and Mark with, with the zoning problems that, that they're having in some of those, those, those areas also, that contact information is the most important thing that we have. So looking around, and, and, and one of our neighboring cities uh, just, just went through this, um, our suggestion is that we repeal the, the, the ordinances that is, exist today and create another ordinance that is simply a registry. A registry that if you were, a, if you were in the rental business, you would have to register that property, give us that contact information, update it on a regular basis. I, I think there's maybe a draft that... Uh, there is. That's going to be that's going to be ready maybe in June to look at, um, to look at that and see, it accomplishes what we want. It then also, with Sherry and her staff, allows because that permit was issued through her office, um, it, it will relieve some of that burden off of them also. So I think we're accomplishing the same thing. It took us a long time to maybe get to the point to where we're at today but I think we maybe got to the point that we need to be at, uh, relieving some of that pressure because we were having some, uh, some issues with, with getting those issued and, and doing some things. So I think this will streamline it. I think it gives us what we want. We'll have that accountable party to, 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 to hold. We'll have a party to hold accountable for that property. 
Um, you know, the, the whole issue with this was trying to clean up the, some of these some of these blighted properties and provide for a safe environment. I think this will do that. It'll it'll give us that. So we'd like just to put all that on hold and, and, and look at this new one and see what you all think. I uh, didn't want to put it on tonight. Didn't want you all to be surprised by all that. But that's why that's where all the delays have been so far of getting to where we're at today. So. Don't, don't we have a large yeah. number? Sorry. Don't we have a large number already registered? To we do. Existing we do. We do. We do. We would switch those over to the registry. Our our goal would be, and we've talked about this a little bit. We would notify every one of those that are that are already there by mail, saying they would automatically be put on that registry. They don't have to do anything else. Those those current permit holders do not have to do anything else. So, and then those that have not, and we still have over a hundred that haven't responded to us. I don't know the exact number. Sherry may know, but it, but it's over a hundred. It's it's closer to probably 200 than it is the, the 100 mark um, that haven't responded to us at all on that one. And we haven't done anything simply because it's been in this limbo state. So will we keep the teeth for those people that have not registered in this ordinance or this I think ordinance? I think then we'll give them an opportunity to register again. And if in fact they don't, then they'll be in violation of that and, and we'll move forward. I mean, I think that's what we've seen, and we've seen that with the codes enforcement people just over and over again. They talk about how nice it is to have that contact person yes. in order to, you know, I, you know, you know, beating a dead horse here, but it's helped yeah. extremely in, in resolving conflicts quickly and issues quickly. So, And th through this whole thing, and we've had, uh, you know, there were over 800 when we started. Uh, to, uh, and, and I can say this, you know, now we could have issued some citations for those people that had not gotten permits yet, but all of the, all of the violations that we have found have, have been addressed and fixed without a citation. Awesome. So, I mean, it's been very successful, and a lot of the land owners and, and property owners that, that we have talked to have said, you know, we're glad that you have this because we didn't know. Right. You know, those especially that are, that are out of state um, don't have any idea what's going on at their property. Even some locally, when we find things and, and, and do it, and, uh, it's taken care of the next day most of the time. So I, it's been very successful that way. Great. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. um, just just one, one more thing. I know it's the last thing on the agenda. I know the mayor wants to talk about a couple things. But this is Mr. Engelman's last committee meeting. It was his last council meeting. Um, so... We are, we are, whatever you want to do funny for the camera, please do, because we're going to, to give him a copy of this, of the tape. Uh, it's his <laughs> retirement gift. Uh, I know he was expecting <laughs> more. Watch it over and over. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, Greg, you know, would you, you know, the microphone would be yours if you'd want to put something on the tape that you're going to have for, you know, the rest of your life, I'm sure, to watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, again, come up, please. I, I'd like to say I'd like to say how how thankful that that I am that that Greg was here for my for my first years over here in this office. He guided me uh, tremendously on all this, and I can't thank him enough for doing that. I know we said it at the last meeting, but Greg, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I won't take long. I never do. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to thank everybody for for the opportunity I've had here. I mean, it's been a it's been a quick time, and and uh, um, I, I said when I came here this was going to be my last stop, and it is. Um, and it and it I can't express how happy I am that uh, grateful I am for all the uh, cooperation, and I think that we've uh, made a difference in the in the budget and the, the fiscal health of the city and. So I'm happy with that, and I'm equally excited that Steve's going to be able to take over, and, and I think he's going to do a great job. And um, just thanks again. It's, uh, it's been a good run. Thank, Thank you, you, Greg. Greg. Thanks, Greg. I'm sure a lot of you could agree. I know it just didn't. In the, in the short time I've been here and a lot of the, the dumb questions that I've had for Greg, he has always been very respectful and he's got the, the patience of a saint and the heart of a teacher to, to help guide me through that. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Um, I had uh, 
four or five items I wanted to go over, and I know I'll try to go through those quickly. I'm sorry. I'll try to go through them very quickly. But we, I know we do have a couple people here this evening. I wanted to open it up to you first if you wanted to, to uh, speak this evening. Yeah, go ahead if you'd like. If you wouldn't mind, start by stating your name. Yes. I'm Jim Perry. I live on Lindenwood Drive. I've been there about 43 years. Um, and in that time, I went from being 27 to almost 71. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm here for. I have a handicap area in front of the house because both me and the wife are handicapped. Our whole, when we even bought it, we bought a ranch because we knew we were going to wind up here forever. And especially her. <laughs> and the problem is, I went ahead and got a handicap spot because those houses, the lots weren't big enough. They wouldn't sell me the extra five feet to get a double garage. And uh, we have to park one behind the other, and I've got a pickup truck which extends onto the sidewalk if I pull in the drive. So I got the, um, the handicap thing, and I was, everything was fine with that. But I have a problem with. Daniel come and fill the thing out. I mean, it's pretty obvious on my tax bill that I get annually that I'm a handicapped person. I get a reduction. And whoever gets it after me, they're going to lose that unless they're another elderly person. I don't sound right, elderly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> senior, that's good. There you go. <laughs> but it, uh, it's just, it kind of it took me by surprise today. They probably explained it then, but I'll, I'll forget what I did today, <laughs> tomorrow. And uh, so what I'd like to do is if there was some way we could have this instead of filling out some things about how many square, how big my driveway is and stuff like that, maybe just check that, that uh, against the property bill and have the police, they can drive by and look and see who's parking there. I don't own the spot. It's being used. Any handicapped person can use it. If I leave and it's there, I've got to wait until they leave. But uh, it keeps the teenagers that like to park in the middle of the area because I can get two trucks. Two trucks can park there, but not a little bitty Chevy. And uh, so that's what I wanted to see, if there's just something they can do to cut down on this. So the, let me try to... Yeah, maybe so, so I was kind of unaware that we did this. So when you fill out the application for the first time, there's a $65 fee, and that basically would cover the cost of Public Works to come out and set up a, a sign post and a sign that would designate that spot as a handicapped spot. Then every year, the applicant comes back in to renew that information. Um, I don't know exactly how many of these we have across the city, but uh, Mr. Perry received a phone call to remind him, um, you know, that that was time. And I think really what he's what he's asking is. Would it be possible maybe to just go ahead and verify that over the phone or, or something that he wouldn't have to come in and refill out all the information again each year? Yeah, that would make it nice. Yeah, the only thing I want to add to this is, Mr. Perry, I uh, brought this to uh, the mayor and my attention about 10 minutes before this meeting, and I, and I had an opportunity to look up the ordinance. The procedure that Mr. Perry is discussing is right out of the ordinance. So there was an ordinance passed in 2009 that allows for the $65 application fee. It has some different parameters that are required. And then it says you do need to come back and renew before July 1st of each year. So if there would be some sort of a policy decision or some type of uh, decision to change, we would just have to amend the ordinance. Can we, like, like you were saying, can we put that on the tax bill somehow? That he has a handicap from his house, and then he oh, can just check spot. that when he sends it in that he's still the resident there and he still has a handicap spot? I don't know. So you're saying you would put the, the question on the tax bill? Or would you just... Uh, Maybe we don't can attach something in the tax bill when we send it out. Don't most of our tax bills come back into lockbox, though? 
How about to sign check? <laughs> so we'd be asking lock so box to there? try to process that information off there. And I don't uh, no, no, it is. What, what, Can we look at it administratively? Yeah, I, uh, yeah. This is the first I heard of this, too. Yeah. I do know that there has to be, it's, it's in 2009, I wasn't here, but I was over on the other side, and I know a little bit about how this was enacted. And, you know, part of it was making sure that their driveways, yes. some of the things they had available to them, you know, were not handicapped accessible. Yeah. Elderly accessible. Well, you me say, see, yeah, that works. My, my tips. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but I think, but so on the renewal thing, I, I think that would be an easy fix for us to try to go back and look at to be more convenient to residents to be able to do that. But we have to be able to be able to make sure that that same resident that got that spot is still in that house. Right. Right. Yeah, and I think know. that's the whole thing. Yeah. That's why we. It makes sense. That I remember I'm that. Sure it's so, but I mean, a phone call. I think yeah, we'll would be great. If yeah, a phone call. Something like that. Yeah. I think that would be great. For there's yeah. not that. There's not that many. I'm gonna tell you. There's maybe a handful. Yeah. That's what I said. Four or five. I could think yeah. Of four. There's maybe a handful throughout the city. There's not that many. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that should be a, that should be an easy fix. We can come up with something. Yeah. I appreciate. It. But, but they're only paying the sixty-five dollars once. once. Right. That's right. Yeah. You just pay that once. It's not an. It's not an. And that's the work. They got right on it and did a good job. You know, and uh, it was just some young girl. Her mother finally <laughs> run her out for her taking the whole driveway. But uh, <laughs> <you know, laughs> couldn't drive. <laughs> but uh, that's what I just thought. And, and the way it worked out today, uh, I'm trying to keep my wife active. And about the only thing I can do is take her driving and something. They said something to keep her from laying down and watching TV all day. Right. And uh, so it kind of blew it. It wasn't a beautiful day anyway. But I appreciate uh, you all considering that. Yeah, we'll thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And we thank will. you for your service, sir. Yes, ma'am. That's my hometown go-to. <laughs> <laughs> Still matters to all of us. All right, did we have anybody else that wanted to mention it? Speak? Yes. Hi, my name is uh, Kevin Bundy. I live on Riggs Avenue in Erlanger. Um, and I'll be as brief as, as I possibly can with this. I, I, I actually just became aware of the situation earlier today myself. Um, as I'm sure council knows, there's a, a water main reconstruction project that just began this week on Riggs Avenue. Um, and that's going to be done, as I found out this, this morning, in two phases, um, starting at uh, um, the, the intersection of uh, Fieldcrest, I believe. Um, Greenfield, I'm sorry, Greenfield, at the intersection of Greenfield. Um, my home is on that same block. Um, and in, in talking with the project supervisor at the water district this morning, um, I found that they're going to go from Greenfield um, toward, toward uh, Kenton Lands Road and toward the Baptist Center um, with the first phase earlier this spring. And then he told me as soon as that was completed that the city was going to come in and they were going to do a road reconstruction project on rigs as well um, that would basically take place um, as soon as they finished starting in July. Um, this was the first I'd heard of the, of the road reconstruction project. And as I said, it, my, my block is basically the borderline of, of both of these projects. In the fall, the water district is then going to go from um, Greenfield to Erlanger Road in the other direction. And then it was my understanding, as I found out later, uh, f from the project engineer at the Water District, that next spring then the city's going to reconstruct rigs from, from I, I guess, that area. And, and this is the gray area I'm hoping that maybe I can get some answers from from council, if not tonight and, 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 and the next, ho hopefully, next couple weeks, because it sounds like this is all quickly moving and I'm kind of late to the party but from Greenfield onto Erlanger Road. My concern, and I talked to Mr. Bogart um, earlier this afternoon, and he was very helpful, as he always has been. I've worked with him in the past. Um, has always been very helpful. Um, and